Hey everyone, if you're wondering why I have this setting right now for all of you, there's a reason why. I am editing some stuff. By the time this video be uploaded, it will be already Thursday noon or afternoon, however it goes. But here in Deleted Wrestle Zone, we would like to dedicate this video to Shannon Daphne um, Sporel, hopefully I pronounced her last name right. As you know, it's been told that she passed away at the age of 46. This led to what happened where there was a disturbing video that took place on Instagram, but for the record, I did not see it. I did not want to see it whatsoever. I'm not a big fan of watching that. Of course, many friends and family tried to reach out to her, even spread the whole thing on Twitter. Um, but sadly, she passed away. Many people said that uh, she was suffering through mental illness or going through suicidal thoughts, but I want to make things clear for everybody. Mental illness is not a fun thing. One of my friends lost her husband through mental illness, not only leaving behind her, but also a daughter who was four years old at the time. And it's saddened that this little girl will never see her daddy again. And my best friend, who I known like a brother for over 10 years, was on the verge of taking his own life. But luckily, I got to him. I reached out to him and I convinced him not to do this. But if you have people who are going through suicidal thoughts, please, please reach out to them. Don't give up on them. I did not give up on my best friend. And it's a good thing because... I love him like a brother and I don't want him to leave this earth whatsoever. If you know someone who's going through that, please reach out. Do not give up on them. I wish we could have done the same thing for Daphne, but it did not happen. But sadly, we would like to pay our condolences to her friends, but mostly to her family. So, Daphne, may you rest in peace. You will be missed, but never forgotten. So rest in peace. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So, let's begin with NXT UK. As you know, there are still things that have been going on. The opening match was supposed to be Blair Davenport taking on Nina Samuels, but however, things got out of hand. Davenport attacked um, Nina Samuels for no apparent reason. Even the bell hasn't rung. She was out of control. She was either losing her temper. And that's not the worst part. She even put gave the Falcon Arrow or something on Sid Scala, the assistant general manager. Now, we know there could be repercussions on Davenport's story, but I'm trying to understand why what is the story build up with it was this something that they want to go in i don't know but we'll get to that at some other point in the entire episode or should i say i saw a uh, of time in nxt uk now as you know last week there was that grueling match that both Ginny and ifa valkyrie went on ifa valkyrie may have walked out as the victor but however she ended up injured and Ginny took exception to say she proved her point that Aoife Valkyrie does not belong in the ring, that she is still standing due to the fact that she broke her and plucked and cut off her wings. And she believes 
that this is her time now and Aoife Valkyrie will never come back. But if I were you, Ginny, I would be more worried that she'll be better than ever. Now, Symbiosis, as you guys know, recently they had a deal with Saxon Huxley, interrupting them a couple weeks ago. But however, management made the decision that Huxley, uh, Saxon Huxley will have two partners of his choosing. Now, it was still unclear who would team up with him. Out of the blue, we had Ashton Carter and Oliver Smith. Or is it Ashton Smith? I don't know. Whatever. These guys volunteered themselves to team up with Saxon Huxley. Now, this is going to take place next week. So, we'll figure out how this teamwork dynamic is going to work with them. Now, this next match we have is Dan Maloney and Andy Wilde taking on Jake Stars and Dave Mastiff. Now, Jake Stars has been improving a whole lot ever since he'd been training mostly with Dan Mastiff. I have to say it was a pretty good match. I have to say I liked how this match ended where uh, Jack St uh, Stars actually pulled a headbutt and then he tagged Dave Mastiff and Cannonball to end the match. I have to say that's an amazing combination and I think it's something that I think we haven't seen for a long time. But it's a pretty good tag team. And these guys should definitely be in the hunt for the NXT UK tag team titles. Which is something I know pretty deadly. Or whoever beats them for the titles will not tolerate. But we'll see what happens then. Now, speaking of tag teams... Pretty Deadly decided to put out a TikTok video, but they were doing it in some weird setting where it was in front of a fountain or whatever, but the Gallus boys, consisted of both Coffee Brothers, interrupted them, but however, they messed with them. Now, is there a chance that we can see both Mark and his brother Joe pursue the tag team titles? I mean, it's a good start. I know that, uh, of course... Wolfgang is involved in the Heritage Cup, but I don't know. I have to say, this will be interesting to see two brothers in this combination and Gallus to be in it. But we'll see what happens. Now, the next match we have is the French Hope Amel taking on Amelia McKenzie. Now, this is because this match was set because Amelia McKenzie, if you guys have noticed or not, Amelia McKenzie has been the protege. Or as Amel like to call uh, Mako Satomura's pet project. You see, Emi, um, Amelia McKenzie had trained in Sa uh, Sato Mako Satomura's um, promotion, Sendai Girl. So she learned a lot from her. So she's trying to prove herself that she built, she can be in the same kind of level as anybody that she stands in her way. And I have to say, it was a pretty good match. But however, it was an upset for Amel. She couldn't believe that she lost to Sutmeko Satomura's pet project, as she would like to call her. But is this the end of it? Because we know the Amel has her sights set once again at the NXT UK Women's title. So what does this mean? I don't know. But this is going to be interesting because we know Mako has women's that would be coming left on right to challenge her and she has no problem with it but we'll see what happens then now the next match which is the main event is the still the opening round for the heritage cup tournament uh we have this time tailman and nathan frazier i have to say this was a very interesting match for me because a if you guys pay attention how tailman acts he's the kind of guy who will let nothing get in his way even if someone tries to steal his thunder or steal his glory or trying to hurt his family in every aspect and i have to say it was impressive but however raji raja raja, uh, raja whatever his name is he was there to help him out too and with him getting involved distracting frazier it cost him the title cost him the match even though the winning uh, pin came from Tailman but should the rest of the contenders be afraid of him 
I would say they would, but the real question, can any of them stop Tailman in order to achieve this? This is a very interesting storyline to follow. I'm kind of interested to see, but we'll see what happens next week. Okay, as you know, Impact Wrestling, some wrestlers had a little great time being on NWA, but now we're back in Impact. The opening match we had is a six, uh, a six person tag team match. On one corner, we have the influence, Caleb of the K, Madison Rain, and of course, it's all about me, to Neil Dashwood taking on Taylor Wilde. Uh, Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellery. Now, this has come about the rivalry between both these teams. Now, if you all recall, not too long ago, Tennille Dashwood will try to stir things up with Rachel Ellery and Jordan Grace, trying to find a tag team partner. And as you know, she now feels like she got along great with Madison Rain. But I have to say, this match was pretty good because it showed that Taylor Wilde, despite the fact that she was out for a long time and now she's back, she showed. She still has it, as any like fans would say, you still got it. You still got it. And it was a good match. And of course, it was pretty darn good in every way. And of course, Grace, Wild, and Eldering won this match. But is this rivalry coming to an end, or is it still going to continue? Who knows? So we'll see what happens then. Now, as you know, Diana Perrazzo remained as the Impact Wrestling Knockouts Champion. Once again, she feels like these questions are, are insulting her, and she proved that she's dominant. But there will be that one person that will dominate her. Even if she doesn't believe it, it will. Even Matthew Renwald believes that. But the real question is, who will be stepping up? But that will be taking some other time. Now, as you know, the main event is Tommy Dreamer versus Ace Austin. Now, if Tommy Dreamer wins, this will be a triple threat match. Now, Ace Austin does not like this because she, he knows there is no guarantee he could win because anything could happen. And as for Christian, he knows that he doesn't need to be pinned. So that's the, the beauty of it. However, he did tell Christian, do not get involved no matter the situation. He wants to go down on his own terms, and which is a admirable decision. Next up, we have Decay, uh, Crazy Steve, and Block Toros being accompanied by Rosemary and Havoc. And then here comes the entrance of Fala Ball and No Way. But out of nowhere in the sky, some person in a horse turned out to be Tenille, uh, Tasha Steele's attack Crazy Steve. And of course, Havoc and Rosemary landed in a trap. Now, Fala Ball and No Way Jose had no indications this was going to happen. But however, it was a good match. But it did not do any good for um, Fala and No Way due to the fact that the fans think they were in on it. But they weren't. But it did cost them the match, allowing for Crazy Steve and Block Taurus to succeed. However, later on in the, in the entire show, Fala Ball made it clear that he did not expect this whatsoever. They mentioned they were going to deal with Block Taurus. But it looks like Natasha Steeles and Savannah H Evans will be coming for the a knockouts titles, knockouts tag team titles, to be added. But we'll see what happened. But of course, Fala Ball ran into his old pal TJP. Looks like that he wants to know if No Way is cool. So he is cool, and they were going to Swingers Palace. Now, as you know, recently we have W Morsey, who's been, of course, telling on interviews there is no such thing as friends because we're backstabbers. Even Moose can agree with them, but he won't. But, of course, that's what happened. But he did call out Eddie Edwards because he's sick and tired that Eddie Edwards has been declared the, the hero of the whole thing. However, W. Morsey attacked him from behind, beating him down. To prove a point, no heroes here, no friendships here whatsoever. Even though people probably expected Sammy Callan to show, but it didn't. We all know they don't like each other, but... Anything could happen, but did not happen on this one, particularly. Now, as you know, Violent by Design 
are still dealing with the whole recent loss and they're blaming Rhino for this. Now, it's still unclear what they're going to do to him. It looks like they locked him in a dark hole or whatever he is. But it kind of tells that the sickness has to leave. And I think it's telling a pretty good, fantastic story about it. I don't know. So, basically, we'll see what's going to happen once Rhino comes back. And I know some of you are saying, where the hell is Heath? I don't know. He's getting better. I saw, last time I saw, he was in the gym working out, trying to get healthy to get back. Now, the next match is the X Division Open Challenge. I have to say, he even said, former X Division champions are allowed to participate. And I cannot expect it. I could not expect it. It was Jake Chris who made his appearance. And I think this was a pretty good challenge. As you know, Jake Chris hasn't been in Impact Wrestling for quite some time since he was released. Along, uh, along his brother Dave, who was fired due to misconduct that took place last year. But it was a pretty good match. And of course, <coughs> uh, Gia wanted to know why he actually assisted this match. And he said he wants the best wrestlers ever. The etch his own legacy however someone had something to say about that and that is the eight time x division champion we're talking about chris sabin who has been who made a market team in impact wrestling for years but now it appears that he is asking josh alexander to put himself in the match with him at victory world for the title but if he beats him he'll be declared as the nine time X Division Champion, but however, if Josh Alexander beats him, then he becomes the guy who says, I beat Chris Haven, which is kind of really cool to say for those who are challenged for those titles. Now, as you know, the most professional wrestler is looking for protégés. They are like guys coming left and right. But, however, a familiar face appeared. I was fully aware that he received a multi-year contract with them. I'm talking about Zicky Dice. I have to say, a perfect way to introduce him, but I'm like curious how they're going to use him on this one. And we'll see what happens. Now, this next match is a tag team match, well, a bit of an intergender. We have Rohit Raju and Shira taking on Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green. Now, Shira mentioned he will not touch a woman or beat her up. However, Rohit Raju took exception to that and gave her the knee. And I thought it was a pretty good move. But Shira's like, are you out of your mind? So basically, we don't know if Matt Cardona will get his payback. But this is something we got to see. And if I was Rohit Raju, I would run. You don't want to piss off an angry boyfriend. Now, in recent time, we have been seeing Sue Young and Kimberly making appearances. They already taken the soul of, how do I say, of Kira Hogan. However, they just recently kidnapped Brandy Lorne. But instead, instead of capturing her soul, somehow she converted into an undead bride. Does this mean that Sue Young is forming a faction full of undead brides or whatever? I don't know. But I'm kind of curious to see. Which is going to be interesting. This, the, the follow. Now, we just had an interesting promo coming from the Good Brothers. As you know, the Good Brothers did not appreciate the last time when they lost to Rich Swan and Ma Willie Mack. Etching themselves to become the number one contenders for the tag titles. However... Rich Swan will not tolerate them disrespecting him and Swan. But he tried to take the fight in the back, but the more convinced him otherwise, saying that next week he's going to give him Carl Anderson in the bunkhouse match, which is going to be crazy. And of course, he has no problem with it. Now, the main event is Ace Austin versus Tommy Dreamer. It was a good match, but however, you saw Fulton trying to ensure that Ace Austin wins this match to make it look one-on-one -on -one for them and I think it played out a pretty good story on this one where Tommy Dreamer wants to eat, leave his legacy in but however Ace Austin 
who believes that it's inevitable to that he will be sooner or later the youngest Impact Wrestling World Champion. So we'll find out when that day happens. So I have to say this show was pretty good. Uh, there were some confusions, but however, this is going to be fun for the upcoming uh, Impact Wrestling shows in weeks to come. And of course, I don't know when it's the next pay-per-view. So I say let's end it here and move forward. Okay, it's been a while. <coughs> it's been a while since I reviewed an event by Yoshi Promotion Oz Academy. I haven't done one for a while. There was one that I missed, but I was unable to see the video. But this one, I was able to. This is from one of the recent events from last month on the 18th. Uh, this one is called the Mayumi Osaki 35th anniversary if you guys don't know who she is she is the founder of Oz Academy she's a vet in the Yoshi wrestling world uh, she formed Oz Academy and of course she is the leader of her own faction Ozaki Goon you know I keep seeing Goon everywhere I don't know it sounds pretty cool but anyway it's uh, basically celebrating her 35th year anniversary as a wrestler and they only had five matches but two of them were title matches so let's go from start to finish first match is a eight woman tag team match first thing we got all the members of ozaki goon we have yumi oka maya Yu yukihi mayumi ozaki and saori anoi taking on natsumi omoka hanasomo harzono ram raicho Taicho and Nagazia Nozaki. Now, this was a pretty good match. However, a bit of the aggressiveness coming from Ozaki Goon since they're mostly the dominant faction within Oz Academy. And not to mention, Oz Academy does have the Ozaki sign in it, which fits perfectly for them. But it did allow for, um, what's her name? Uh, Saori Anoe, who pin or put one of their, their competitors in a submission allowing for herself to win the match however this is not the end of of zaki goon it was later revealed that the oz academy open weight title has been vacant and all four members of the ozaki goon will be competing for this title and i will get to that at the main event in a bit next match we have is this a a male singles competition yes they have male involved but they're only a few first match we have well we have Mitsuhitsa uh, Tsunabe versus Yuko Miyamoto now the match was pretty good I have to say for only to have only one men, men show on this one uh, I don't know it was good I have to say uh, not much of the story build up for me but uh I have to say, I don't know why they have men in this one, but maybe they keeping keep things interesting for fans. I'm not sure. I don't remember that one. In the last one I did, it had one. Hmm. I gotta look it up when I get a chance. Next match we got is a tag team match. We got, of course, the freelancer, Hiroyo Matsumoto and Akino taking on course the extreme death match wrestler in the only female I know of Rina Yamashita taking on the let a teaming with the legend and as JR says she's gonna be she's the one you don't see making biscuits Aja Khan I have to say it was a very fun match because there was a funny moment where Aja Khan was trying to get on the back of Rina, I'm like, Rina, this woman weighs bigger than you. She's, wait, I don't know if there was a comedy stint, but it played out well. But it was Akino who actually pinned, uh, what's her name, Rina, and forced her to tap out. I'm like, wow, great match. I enjoyed it. Now, the next match is a 
the Oz Academy Tag Team Titles in a three-way. First team we got Beast Friends, consisting of you, which is Y-U-U, and of course, Kaori Yonayama, who we know as either Death Yamasan, Kogin Death, now Fukigin. So basically, she's not playing those characters. Taking Also taking on Mission K4, Takeru Sekiguchi, and Sonoko Kato, taking on the champions, Itsuki Aoki and Tsubasa uh, Karugaki. Now, this is a very interesting match. Um, Itsuki used to... Um, no, what's her name? Tsubasa was actually a former... The, what was once friend with Mission 4K until they recently lost. And now it appears that they want... Uh, Mission 4K are trying to get a chance to get those titles back. But however, it showed Aoki and... Uh, what's her name? Um... Karagaki, who is the dominant team on this one, it showed they are now becoming a force to be reckoned with. They should not be ignored, but they pulled off one hell of a match on this one. I enjoyed the storyline on this one. And now we get to the main event for the Oz Academy Open Weight title in a four way elimination match, which was vacant at the time. All members of Ozaki Goon, that consistent of Saori Onoi. Ma, uh, Maya Yukihiki and Yuma Oka and of course Mayumi Zaki. Now this match there were some problems. It appears that Mayumi has her goons to ensure she retains the try to wins this match but however it was um, what's her name? Yukihi, Yukihi who uh, um, Maya Yukihi who actually stood ground no matter what happened she did not waver. She took every beating that Mayu and her goons le uh, did to her. And she continued to win. And she pulled off a great power bomb to pin her to 1, 2, 3. Becoming the open weight, um, the Oz Academy open weight champion. Which is really good. I have to say this match was so brutal. It told a fantastic story. And I think one day I'll, if there's more of Oz Academy, I'm definitely going to review all of them. Okay, the last thing I'm going to review is a stardom event, the Cinderella Tour in Mats uh, Matsumoto. Um, there were only five matches on this one. First match we had is Lady C taking on Unagi Sayaka. Um, Lady C who still hasn't picked up the victory, but however she does show she can be strong. But however, when it comes to Unagi, she's a bit more stronger than her. And of course, she put her in a that famous stretch on the back type of submission forcing her to tap out which was a good match for Unagi as you know she is becoming one of the most strongest competitors in stardom but also even though they um she's a bit older than any of the other girls she is not afraid to admit that now the next match we have Oda Tai consistent of Rina and Fuki and Death taking on the um, Cosmic Angels, Mina Shirakawa, and Tam Nakano. Now, you know for a fact in this type of matches that the other members are going to ensure they win their matches because they don't care how they win them or care about. It's all about just making wins. That's all that matters. But also, they even targeted the Cosmic Angels for another shot of the um, artist titles because they believe in their minds that those titles... They're, they don't even care for them. But we'll get to that when that moment comes. When I get to review more of Stardom. But however, this match ended in favor of Odetai's Rina and Fukigen Death. Next match we have is a tag team match. We got DDMs, Himika and Suri taking on Queen's Quest, Hina and Utami Hayashida. Now, this was one of those matches I wasn't too much hyped because... I had a feeling it was going to go in favor of DDM because uh, Rina, who is not much of an experienced wrestler, but she is a member of Queen's Quest, it kind of fell in the favor that she was going to be the one pinned, and it kind of did felt that way when I saw the, saw the match from the start to beginning. Next match, we have, once again, the other members of Odetai, 
Ruka, Konami, and Atsuko Tora. Uh, Saki Kashima was, was not here. Taking on stars, Hanan, Starlight Kid, and Mayu Iwatani. As you know, the feud between both factions continue on no matter what. It kind of feels this is a never-ending battle from both teams. But however, Starlight Kid was able to pull a fast one on Atsuko Tora. However, Natsuko will not appreciate that loss no matter what. She is hell-bent to destroy, of course, the stars, but mostly Mayu Iwatani. The next match is a six-woman tag team match. We have Saya Kamitani, Azumi, and Momo Watanabe taking on DDMs, Mika, Natsupoi, and Julia. This match was so good. I wasn't I was thinking DDM was gonna steal this one, but no, it was uh the Queen's Quest that took this one. However, they're still trying to make a name for themselves, trying to get back to the top, but however, it's gonna be a little long way to go since you all know the history of Queen's Quest or not. But we'll see what happens then. So I think we'll end everything with starting right here. So right now I'm going to do two news updates regarding one on uh, what's going on with WWE Japan and of course the return of former AEW Women's World Champion. So welcome to the news updates right now. There's only two things I want to reveal right now. First one, AEW has announced that Rio will be back in AEW and she will participate in the Casino Battle Royale. Now some of you probably ask yourselves if you guys know this or not, where has Rio been the entire time? Well, uh, it's been revealed that she was out of action due to a bad reaction to the vaccine. As you know, we've been seeing a lot of stories about that. Now, I don't want to get into the whole anti-vaccine, anti-mask guys. I don't want that here. Leave that out of it, please. But back to the story. Back to the news on this one. Rio is 100% ready to come back, according to Dave Meltzer. So we are expected to see her make her return to AEW on the Casino Battle Royale this coming Sunday. Now, speaking of Japan, we have... For many fans who has been saying they don't want WWE in Japan, but now it appears WWE are now dissolving the Japanese division. Now, what is that supposed to mean for some of you, or what does it mean? Well, as you've been aware, WWE has been trying to set up a foothold in Japan for years. They have tried to buy promotions. We had like Pro Wrestling Noah, Dragon Gate, Stardom, Big Japan Pro Wrestling. Nothing works. Not a whole lot of Japanese wrestlers were too fond of the idea of having um, WWE set a foot in Japan. But some of the WWE loyalists out there will say, but the, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be good for publicity stunt. Uh, keep in mind, the Japanese wrestling scene are not dumb. They pay, they pay attention to what's going on in the rest of the world. And that includes what's going on in the UK. You think you want them to suffer the same way? No. So they're not interested. Only a small number of wrestlers do. But at the same time, you ask yourself, wait a minute. Doesn't it real work for these guys, for the Japanese division? I, she is been declared the ambassador, but I don't know. I don't know doesn't mean that they're gonna, she may lose her job and come back. Because I know Stardom has, are trying to, to rehire her. They want to pay her big money for her return. But we'll see what happens then. So I think that's it by now with the news updates. So let's end it right here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's been a hell of a ride. You know, I didn't think I was going to do all four to review, but thank God I did. Did it in time. Coming up, we got AEW Rampage, 205 Live, and of course, the latest New Japan Strong event, Barbecue Brawl. But also going to review a recent Ref Pro event. If you guys aren't familiar as with Ref Pro, they are one of the most biggest independent promotions in England and it's one of the best promotions to watch and they're cele and they celebrate their nine year anniversary uh, this past August so 
I'll save that for the following episode. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.